Welcome to another new video of interesting math problem on our channel Math Solutions for You. Please do like, share, comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. A standardized test question on probability that I came across recently and this is one of those questions that may be very easy and obvious to some of you but to some others it may not be as intuitive. So I thought of making a video on this with some explanation that will hopefully make this problem understandable. It's given that probability of occurrence of two events A and B are PA equal to 0.5 and PB equal to 0.3 respectively. What is the maximum possible probability of simultaneous occurrence of both events A and B. Well, I'd like to start off by clarifying, you know, some, some concepts up front. So if A and B are two events, then the simultaneous occurrence of both events is represented by A intersection B. And the intersection is written like an inverted U, but that's a pretty standard notation in set theory. Now, some of you may be gravitated towards concluding that PA intersection B will be equal to product of PA and PB. And that comes to 0.15 in this case, like 0.5 multiplied by 0.3, so that's 0.15. So is this correct? Well, it's important to note that this is a result that's not necessarily true always. We have applied such result in previous probability problems, but this is strictly based on the fact that the events A and B need to be independent. So PA intersection B is equal to PA multiplied by PB only if A and B are independent events. Otherwise, we cannot infer this result. And in this particular problem, it's not given that the events A and B are independent. So we cannot assume as such. So for making this the solution to this problem more intuitive, I will basically, you know, take the help of a Venn diagram. So basically, what we do is represent the two events, A and B, by circles. And the event with the smaller probability, so that's B, is actually represented by uh, the smaller circle. So if the events are as depicted here, they have no overlap. So, so the A intersection B, the, the event, the simultaneous occurrence of uh, both events would be, you know, represented in the, in the Venn diagram by the overlap of these two circles. And right now, the way I have drawn these circles, they have no overlap. So that means essentially, the probability of simultaneous occurrence of these two events is zero because there's no overlap between A and B. But, and, and one thing to notice, in such cases, the events are called mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive means that these two events um, cannot occur at the same time simultaneously. And an example of this would be in a coin flipping experiment, you cannot get the heads and the tail in the same toss, right? So, so that's a mutual exclusive. So heads and tails would be mutually exclusive in a single flip of a coin. So either heads will occur or tails will occur. You know, ruling out the, the probability that the coin can stand on its edge, one of those two events has to occur, but they cannot occur both simultaneously. So that's an example of a mutually exclusive event. So... A and B, as given in the problem, need not be like this. So this is just one possibility. But the problem didn't state that A and B are 
uh, you know, mutually exclusive. And if they are, PA intersection B will be zero, which kind of actually, you know, represents the lowest possible value the probability of simultaneous occurrence of both events can take because probability can be zero or a number greater than zero between one and zero, right? It cannot be, you know, necessarily a negative number. So what we have in this particular uh, situation of mutual exclusivity is the minimum possible value of um, simultaneous occurrence of both the events. But that's kind of not the, what the problem asks. The problem asks for the maximum possible value. Like I said, A and B need not be like this. This is just one condition. I can have, you know, some overlap between A and B. So if I push B a little bit into A, now that I have some overlap, now there is a non-zero probability of, the simultaneous occurrence of A and B because the, there is a region of overlap and that's the A intersection B. So that represents the, the probability of simultaneous occurrence of both events. So if there is some overlap between A and B, as is the case right now, then we know that probability of A intersection B is non-zero, right? And further, it's very evident from the figure that greater the overlap, so if I push B even more into A, something like this, so I've pushed B even more into A, so that means we have a greater overlap between the events A and B, that means that there is a greater probability of simultaneous occurrence of A and B. So, so P of A intersection B is now greater, greater the overlap. So now we have to, you know, ask the question, well, what's the limiting case? So, so how much can I push B so that I have in a maximum overlap between A and B? And that pretty much is pushing all of B into A. Right, so B is the smaller circle, right? So I can, you know, in the limiting case, push all of B into A. So the, the smaller circle resides entirely within the bigger circle. And that's really going to be the case of my maximum overlap. So maximum overlap occurs when B, which is the event with the smaller probability, resides entirely within A. And that really represents the case when I have the maximum possible probability of simultaneous occurrence of both events. So that simply becomes, so the, so the area of overlap here is simply the entire of circle B, right? So it's the entire even B. So the probability of A intersection B in this limiting case would be simply the probability of the event B itself, and that's 0.3. So that's the maximum value. So the correct choice in this case will be option C, 0.3.